Hi, my name is Paul Brosesen, and today I'm going to show you something that I've been working on for my personal project, which is a game called Aura Robos. So, what I've been up to. Uh, so what I've been up to is essentially figuring out how I can cut up a grid that has, you know, um, a, let's say a big rock-like structure in the middle of it, and then how do I figure out what type of pre-made module do I need to copy onto each grid so that it looks like it's one big cohesive system. So every single tile gets you know, picked depending on the neighbors that it has, the neighboring values. So before we go into the end result and how you approach doing it yourself, I just wanted to show one other really common and important use case, and that is uh, terrain. So imagine this use case where once again, you have a grid that is split up into individual tiles uh, and you want it to be you know, two separate or several uh, types of tiles. You want it to be grass and you want it to be, let's say a, a mud or rock type background. So what you need to do is of course, figure out for every single tile, what type of sprite you need. Do you need a corner piece? Do you need an isolated piece? Do you need a middle piece? And that is something that this Wang tile system can figure out for you. So this is the end result, uh, and we'll quickly take a look at the, um, the result that it was before I started implementing this so that we can see why I did that. So this was how it looked like before. I essentially copied you know, the same rock type you know, module onto each, each um, instance of this grid, which as you can see, looked quite repetitive. So what I wanted to do is figure out how can I make it so that it's easier on the eyes, it looks more visually pleasing, and um, just is a bit more cool overall. So what I did is I implemented um, a, a new set of Wang tiles inside of Houdini using SideFX Labs. As you can see here, this was the first implementation that I did using pre-made pieces. Uh, but now what I'll do is I'll go into, um, you know, how I achieved the end result we've thought before. How do we calculate Wang tiles? Wang tiles essentially allow you to do some simple mathematic operations to figure out what type of um, bitwise tile index each you know, instance of a module that you're going to create needs to be. And the way it does that, it essentially looks at uh, a grid, right, which we have here. And then you have two sets of values. We have a value that needs to be filled, which in this case is a rock. And we have a value that needs to be empty, which in this case is everything that is not a rock. In this example, that is um, you know, represented with the color yellow, which means that it needs to be filled, or in my case, it is a rock. And then we have a value of blue, which in this case means it is not a rock. Then what we do for each cell of our tile, we look at our neighbors. So in this case, the four direct neighbors, the one north of it, the one east of it, the one south of it, and the one west of it. And then depending on where the neighbor is and the value of it, we add up the values that, you know, correspond with the directions. So if I have an, another rock object next to me on the east side, I you know add up a value of two. If I have another one up north, I add another value of one to it. So you know if I had one here and one here, I would have a value of three already. I keep doing that for all of them. So in this case, um, imagine that I have one on the west side and one on the north side, that would give me a bitwise tile index of nine, which we can see corresponds to this tile here. Uh, this might seem you know, somewhat complex to implement, but thankfully uh, I've added it to SideFX Labs, which is once again a free open source tool set. Uh, so like I said, this is what it looked like before. I just copied rock objects onto every single instance, which looks very repetitive and you know, not very pleasing on the eye. Uh, this is the result using the built-in uh, Labs Wang Tile Decoder and Wang Tile Sample. So what do we need? We essentially need a set of, you know, a grid with a set of values. In this case, I'm just going to use black and white, black being the rock pieces, white being the non-rock pieces. We plug that into the, the decoder where we say we need it to be decoded using the two edge mode of Wang tiles. We then uh, specify the number of rows and columns. So in this case, this example grid is 20 by 20. So that's what is specified here. We then plug that into a copy by points and we also feed in this Wang tile sample node, which is also set to edge. So what is this Wang tile sample edge? Well, that is just a set of pre-made uh, example pieces that you can modify to suit your needs. But as you can see, these are the pieces that we both saw uh, in the example uh, of the Wang tiles. 
but also the one that we see here in my initial implementation. Once we copy it, we can see that now indeed it does copy it properly. So what it does, the decoder automatically decoded every single black and white pixel value to a bitwise tile index. So if we middle mouse on our rank tile decoder and we highlight the name attribute, we can see that it assigned you know, a, an integer value to each point. So we have a number nine here, we have a number 11 here, and 11 here, and 11 here, and a 15 in the middle. Those correspond to these tiles that I showed you before. The copy to points node essentially you know, finds the matching number from here and just copies the corresponding module onto the point. And this is a very easy and very powerful workflow because now we can essentially just uh, go up here and uh, you know modify that grid by, for example, saying, no, you know, I want it to be black here as well. Let me just set this to point selection mode. And now we can see that we have also got some modules here. And we can do that dynamically, right? We can select it here, add some more here. Oh, I deselected the other ones. And by just simply modifying some of these properties, we can get some new looking variations. So then, next up, uh, we're not going to use those pre-made pieces. We want to use the ones that I made before. And that are these pieces. And as you can see, those just correspond with the ones that I had before, right? Which are these guys here. I just made them look like rocks. I then do the exact same thing, plug that into the Wang tile decoder. And as you can see, we now have great looking rocks here using the correct modules that they need to be. I then export this as instances to Unreal, or at least I parse it using my gameplay logic so that I can spawn these dynamically during the game. That's it. I hope this was useful and um, I hope this can help you in your projects. All you really need is to install Houdini, install the SideFX Labs toolset, and you will get these tools completely for free. That's it. Thank you.